What's up guys? It's uh, Monday, June 19th. Uh, make this a little more readable. I um, want to talk to you about some ideas I got this week. Keep it quick. Um, first, let's take a look at um, uh, market calendar. And we got some Fed stuff coming up, uh, coming up this week. So, happy holidays to everyone. Um, June twentieth, uh, some Fed stuff around eleven forty-five to be aware of, but probably won't move much. Uh, Wednesday, we've got Jerome Powell talking to the uh, House and then Senate uh, on Thursday at 10 a.m. So keep an eye on that. These are going to move the markets and then we have PMI on Friday morning. Um, if I could guess, we're going to have some down days here and uh, see some pullbacks. So um, first let's take a look at uh, the S&P. Um, so this is SPX, uh, S&P index. Uh, so these numbers were not on, on our chart. I just put these on here. Uh, 44, 44. Let's make it a nice, nice number. 44, 44. Uh, will be a, an interesting place to see if we look back to the left here. Um, we'll see here we had a pretty big breakdown candle. Here we had a large move down. Interestingly, um, where was that real big move down? Was it this one? Um, it was in April. I don't know, I was thinking, oh no, I was thinking of this one. Here it is. Here it is. So we had this really big failure right at the end of, uh, or uh, in June, not at the end, sorry, in the middle of June. So, you know, we might see some interesting pullbacks going into June. Um, July and August were kind of bullish, surprisingly. And then, um, you know, then we kind of came back down. So, as far as seasonality, we could see some pullbacks into July 4th, so keep that in mind. Um, as far as levels, so we've got 44.44 is a nice round number um, with some major rejection here, you know, major rejection here, major rejection here. We kind of fought it here and got above it, um, but ultimately. That's an area of resistance, 44.44, and if you'll see, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but that's an idea that I have, is 44.44. A retest of that, getting much above it too fast, uh, look, for a, look, for a, uh, look for a failure. Um, as far as futures, let's see, uh, let's see what we're doing here. Not much right now. Um, so... So before we get too bearish, I want you to remember, let's go to the daily chart here. This this makes sense because we've had we had such a consolidation in this area. I swear one day I'll learn how to use this. We had two months of consolidation. So so we expect a large breakout without even a retest really I mean they didn't even come back to the trend line they just they just consolidated a little bit more and then ripped right um, one thing we don't have uh, yet is is blow off top necessarily you could argue that this candle was a blow off top but but volume didn't really show that because we had higher volume on this day than we did on this big candle right so it's possible that we get now we're down just a little bit right now you could argue that's a reversal but i don't because it's not on reversal volume um 
Let's see how this volume increased. That's break out volume, right? And then it's been decreasing. As long as volume is decreasing, it's going to stay in the same direction. So we want to see large volume, which we did not surprisingly see on Friday. I thought Friday was going to be uh, end of op uh, options expiration. That would have been our reversal. Actually, let's jump over to SPY and see if that was. Uh, yeah, it might, it might be, it wasn't really capitulation volume. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me, uh, get into some free space here. Okay, so, if you look at how big Spy's day was, you would assume that's a blow-off top. It's an ending move, but there really wasn't much volume to support that move. So, so we could just be consolidating for another another move higher. This is the kind of candle you can see that let's get charts off completely. Um, this is the kind of move that you want to see reverse the market, right? This kind of volume up here, not this generic sideways action. You know, we need we need a spike, and that that was a big day. It was a, a pullback on large volume, so that was you know could warrant a few days pullback. But we don't really we don't haven't seen the spike in volume yet. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we can keep going higher. So uh, so 444, which they got to the high of this candle was. 443.90, 444 or SPX 4444. You know those are interesting numbers. Um, when you get into the 400s, an interesting I've interesting thing I found is 404, 414, 424, 434, 444, 454. Numbers that end in a four tend to be the reversals instead of 420, 430, 440, 450. So if we get to 450. You know, really, we want to look at 454 and see if that's that's more of a reversal candle up here, which would make sense if they came up short of this 456 area. So 454 would be a better short, I think, than 451, honestly. Um, ultimately, I said our number is this red bar, uh, 45127, 451.30 area would be a short. But I kind of like 454 better as a short, or 444 if they come up short of it altogether and just drop the market. But don't just expect, and I could be wrong, but don't just expect a straight pullback. That's likely not what they're going to do. They fought this hard to get this high this fast. They're going to be buying every dips. Every time they dip, they're going to be buying it, right? So you know, expect a move like that. Something similar to that would be would be uh, ideal. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind is what time they buy and sell. So let's take a look at this here. Uh, let's go to the hourly chart. Why does this keep popping out? I didn't pay my bill. Uh, let's go to the hourly chart. Um, and or even a 15 minute let's start with 15 minute now let's look for some themes real quick so um, like this here and this here so they bought the morning and they sold the afternoon they bought the morning sold the afternoon sold the morning bought the afternoon right sold the morning bought mostly and now we back to now we're back to buy the morning, sell the afternoon, buy the morning, sell the afternoon, and now we're starting to reverse. So um, this is just kind of a trend idea, you know, they're starting to sell the morning, but they didn't really buy the afternoon yet. So one thing we want to watch is for some power hour stuff with the Fed. If they sell the morning, we could see a rips in the afternoon. If they buy the morning, then at 10 o'clock we want to be short. Uh, you know when that when that news hits. Um, 
10 o'clock. So actually that would be morning news, 9 o'clock my time, 10 o'clock, um, 10 o'clock Wall Street time. So let's keep that in mind. We can play some, uh, so we're, we're transitioning now. We're into sell the mornings, right? So they'll likely be down here on Monday. Um, under 436, this whole general area is support, so it could bounce out of nowhere. If we do get down to 432.70, that would be an excellent place to buy. And you could probably even swing a couple days back to 444. So keep that in mind. Sell the morning, buy the afternoon. Um, if we just chop sideways for the next few days, you know, then we could get back into buy the morning, sell the afternoon, and, and, and you know, we'll have to change our idea. But right now, you know, we're buying dips. We're still buying dips. I don't want to short um, anything too fast. And I don't want to swing any puts at this moment because we don't have a double top in the market yet. We don't have anything at all that screams the top is in. It's, it's really not. And that sounds crazy. But like if you just look at if you just look at this, we consolidated for two months, we broke out, we consolidated again, we moved up, pulled back, moved up, pulled back, moved up, pulled back. You know what I mean? Like there's there's nothing that screams short the market. And maybe that's my fault. Maybe I'm thinking like maybe I'm too bullish. But um do that. Here's uh, the only scenario I can think of that might be bearish is just a gap down below this this uh, this megaphone pattern here. All right. So again, getting up up here too fast, getting up here on like Wednesday. Oh, I can't imagine we'll be here on Tuesday, but you know Wednesday, Thursday, if we're up at the top of this this wedge. Oops, we didn't do that. Um, does that make sense? Like if we come down here, bounce, and we go straight up, move straight up on Fed news, then that's going to be that's going to be our short. But right now, they're just buying dips, especially if they break down and then break back above it. That's going to propel it, and we don't want to miss those opportunities, because again, if you look at Tesla, I've been screaming Tesla since one one sixty five. And we only caught like a couple days of this, but I mean, if you really just zoom out and look at it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's just going straight up, up to our 313.20 area. And then uh, you narrow down to smaller time frames and, and uh, I don't know why my line, lines always get messed up, but, but um, you know, I mean, the, the lines are holding pretty well. We had a consolidation area with a flat top. They broke out. They retested it. And bam, they bought that. Right? They dipped back here to put in a double bottom here. And bam, they bought that. Now they're, uh, you know, they might pull back to this 157 area. 156.77. You know, that was support. You can see they bought it up. They bought it up. They bought it up. So every time they get below that line, they buy, buy it back up. So you have an institutional buyer from... 257 all the way up to 313. Right? I've showed this multiple times, but you know if you look at this, 257 to 313, 257 to 313, 257 to 313. That is an expectation. Um, for some reason, we're down here, and we break this 250 area, then we'll get an equal opposite reaction. You know, opposite of this. So. I just want, I just, everybody wants to short the market, and, and I lost, the most amount of money I lost was in 2020 trying to call the top, and I learned from that. So, uh, from that, um, you know, tech stocks are getting a little extended. U was not a good breakout. Um, so I'll start with QQQ. So, QQQ blew through our numbers. I thought it was going to be a short here at 360, 359. It didn't. Got to 363 where I thought we were overextended. It didn't. Um, if you start looking at some of these fundamentals, you know, on the on the weekly, 
um, you know, it looks extremely extended, but at the same time, if you consider that consolidation, then that's an expected move. They have a green topping tail, which means they can, they can still retest those highs. So don't get overly bearish yet. The only way would be like a big 5% gap down. Um, however, I do think we are starting to roll over um, and, and, and get exhausted. So we do want to start looking for short positions, but what we don't want to do is short stocks like Nvidia, because you know, I mean, this move is just stupid, absolutely stupid, right? They're getting overextended, but they can chop here for 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 you know a couple weeks before, uh, and like this one here, they got extended, but they just chopped sideways for like six months, right? So we don't want to be trying to short NVIDIA. If it got up up to this line too fast, you know, 480, 480 area, especially a spike of 500, that would be a pretty good short. But, you know, it took Tesla months to finally reverse and fall after we had that huge run. So I've kind of learned my lesson. Don't short the strong stuff. Just buy the dips. And I've learned it's better to make money than be right. So keep that in mind. Let that be your mantra if you want. Uh, so let's look for some long ideas first. Um, let's flip over to the section rotation thing. Um, so obviously technology has been outperforming. Before we go into a recession, keep that in mind, we're still headed to a recession. Before we get into a recession, technology, discretionary communication services tend to do well. And then uh, after the recession happens, then you start seeing these other things, other things start start coming back too. But if you look back at 2007, I found this website. Um, you can just Google this if you want. Um, in 2007, it says energy and materials lead at market tops. Consumer discretionary lagging. And I think this is interesting because this is right where we are. If you look at my first one I want to look at is Amazon. Now, I've got lines all over the place, but... Um, so... Oh, that's an old one. Let me delete this. Um, yeah, September, September 250 calls. That would have been a that would have been a good a good run. Oh well. Um, so Amazon, throw the 50 on here, and let's go to the weekly chart. Why isn't that showing up? I don't know what's going on with my. I don't know what's going on with my thing tonight. But anyway, um, I really wanted to show you this. So Amazon, let's look at the weekly chart here see where we are then we'll look at the daily chart so here's the weekly chart we still have lower highs right and lower lows so Amazon is lagging the rest of the market now they had a nice bull run but they are lagging let's throw on the uh, 50 MA I apologize about this yeah, that's not gonna work. Anyway, the 50 MA is like is is looking like looking like this right now. And so I think when we get up here, this is starting to be a reversal, and uh, I'd like to short this one. So let's close that back down. So 133.68. We've had that line on there for a while. Uh, this is a break up candle uh, open here. So we can expect a reversal there if we see some, uh, there's 
volume works. I don't know why volume works. Um, but look how many weeks. This is a weekly chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven green weeks in a row. What happens after just four green weeks? All right, you get a reversal. So Amazon is on my list for shorts. I like it. Um, and really, you could even add, we'll add some more lines to this real quick. So let's say this here is a huge breakdown candle. The close of this one uh, was, or the open of this one was 125.25. So we're going to add a line. Now they closed above it technically. 125.25. Uh, so that's an institutional seller at 125.25, if you can see, you know, they closed above it by like 15 cents, but you know, whatever. But they got above it, they sold off. They got above it, they sold off. They got above it, and they pushed it back down. So the expectation is, if we can get back above here, that's gonna be a good place for a short. And if we get drill down to like a 15 minute or an hourly, you know, um, that would be an interesting place to uh, short it. Uh, you can even see right here and here, you know, these areas were sellers. And it flipped to support right here. It kind of got became support. But ultimately, I like this area 125, um, even up to 127. If we get a spike on Tuesday morning, you know, if we get a big spike, I would look to short that one and start, start swinging puts on, on Amazon because um, consumer discretionary, people aren't going to be buying as much. Um, I would like to find it. I can't right now. I shared it on Friday. Credit card debt is delinquent. Credit card debt is inclined is uh, increasing, and um, so you know I think with stuff like that, when people's credit cards start getting maxed out, um, stuff's going to start falling apart. So for right now, we've got a trend line. Um, if we were somehow you know break below that and come back up to retest this 125.25 area. I would I would look for a short for sure Amazon short. Um, I was gonna say um, Boeing. I said Boeing because I like this this line's been on our chart for a while. 222.74. Um, you can see it's already put in a double top, uh, almost a triple top, I guess you could say. And that's you know not a not, not a great reversal candle, but it is definitely a reversal candle. We'll probably open down here at the 218 area. But, um, you know, at first I wanted to short this because, as you can see, there's a large seller uh, seller pressure down here. But it might actually go backwards on this. So I'm, I'm not too excited to get short on this one. But I do keep it on mind in, in mind because um, what I would like is to see a failed, a failed bull flag here. So we kind of got a bull flag right under support. So ideally, you know, if they do get up above, above this, they can squeeze pretty hard. So we'll keep this on our long and our short list. But um, Boeing, um, Boeing, this rejection here, I'd like for it to break back into this channel under uh, 217 area and at least retest the bottom, if not break break down. So Boeing, keep that on, on your uh, radar. For short, if we get above, you know, anywhere like 225, look for an equal opposite move higher and a squeeze up to this 260 area. So we'll play that one both ways. Um, Dow Jones Transports, uh, which is, you know, this has been a, a historically, uh, you know, historical area of resistance. So, you know, this 15,000 area. Uh, which we came up to it, and, and we did have a pretty good reversal candle on that one. As you can see, we kind of had some reversal volume on a red candle into resistance. We ran up without any any uh, any major resistance um, until we got there. So, you know, keep an eye on that one short. Um, DJT, I don't know if you can buy options on that one or not, but Boeing, Boeing would make up Dow Jones Transport. Um, UPS and FedEx, I'd like to keep these ones on watch also. A lot of people are talking about filling this gap, and I think what will happen is, is you'll get an equal opposite move. 
uh, you'll get a retest of these lows. And we did get a triple bottom here. However, um, breaking below that, you know, that's going to drop quickly to 155. And um, that would be a heck of a move from one, 175 to 155. So, you know, keep that on watch. Uh, UPS for a lower low. Right now we have a high, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And we could even take out in this larger section, uh, you know, high, low, lower high, lower low. So keep that one in mind. Um, we do have this area of support around 155, but that would be a legitimate target. Getting below that, you know, could open a trap door down here to 120. So let's keep UPS on our short list. Even though we made a little bit on the squeeze uh, a couple weeks ago, UPS, uh, Boeing, and then FedEx, same thing. Uh, FedEx is the same thing as Boeing. You see this general area is resistance. Um, right? General area of resistance. So getting up in there, you could uh, kind of lotto puts and then start adding to position once we get back below 233. So keep FedEx short on your list. Um, and then finally, my favorite, I still think, I still think something's going to happen with PNC. And uh, they came back up and retested our number, uh, 130, 130.15, and they're still finding resistance even after this big drop. So I find that interesting. We're going to use the exact same pattern and just say, you know, we have a bull flag building right here. If they get above it, they can squeeze. If they break above it and fail, you know, that's going to be a pretty large move down. We have a flat top here mostly and an expanding megaphone down. Um, PNC, look for PNC to be your next bank that fails. They're, uh, they start small with regional and then they get to the larger ones here. So I must not have resubscribed this month. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so short list, uh, Boeing, FedEx, UPS, PNC. Um, DJT, if that has options, I don't know, I don't, I don't normally trade that one. So, uh, but I said, we're not done yet, so let's keep keep going. Uh, Tesla is still on our long list for now, uh, up to 313. It'll be interesting to see if we can get above 313 and start squeezing, making these uh, ridiculous moves higher. Um, the nice thing about, about bear markets is um, bears get burnt really hard and um, just like I did, just like I always do. So I've learned to just be just be okay with it and just play the long play. But right now, you know, the weekly looks looks really strong. There's nothing wrong with it. And it's got in increasing volume on this breakout, but not reversal volume, right? So let's keep this one on watch too long. Uh, to 313 area and possibly some lottos into this, you know, 350 area, 360 area, and who knows, it might even be a, uh, might even be a Nvidia type move up to this, you know, 400. Keep that on watch um, because really it's just, you know, it's if they can get above that. If they can get above that, you know, then they can start squeezing hardcore. So Tesla long. Um, GLD uh, gold was on our long list. Um, I still like it. I'd like to get above this little wedge area. Um, so I, I don't know. It might or might not work. But, um, you know, we'll keep that one on, on. We can keep buying the bottom here. And uh, see if we see if we bounce with a pretty pretty tight stop. If you get much below, you know, 178.30, and then you know it's then it's just a true breakdown, and, and it's going to fail. But um, I think gold and oil both are going to bounce. We talked about USO last week, and it looks prime 
for a break higher, in my opinion. And of course, my opinion doesn't mean much, but you know, this is actually stronger than gold, in my opinion. We got down to 60. Last time we got to 60, we ran from 60 to 90. We talked about that. Um, this move back, back in, uh, you know, whatever. Whenever this was, uh, 2016, from 60 area to 90, 60 area to 90. Breakout here, a failed breakdown is always stronger, or, you know, failed breakdown is always stronger than the breakdown. So we could expect a break above this wedge to get back up to that 90 area, um, if not at least, you know, 80. But keep oil on watch. With oil, we are already in oxy. Um, which is also very low risk, uh, low risk to reward uh, trade, which, you know, same idea, trying to buy the bottom to get a break above, and ultimately this is just a bull flag to push higher. Uh, XOM, we did not get in yet, but same story. Uh, this one's got higher, higher lows and, and uh, just consolidating sideways for another push higher. Um, it's already broken above above these highs, so you know. So with this one, I also want to look at XLE because, as you saw here, energy and materials lead the top of the market. Energy is XLE, materials, gold and oil. They are going to lead us into the recession. Uh, we're short banks. We're short. Um, um, you know, some of those other ones, but, uh, long energy stocks. So check this out. Here's XLE. Uh, and this could ultimately break down and just be a bare flag. But what we're going to do is we're going to play, this is our bottom. And we could really even make like this candle our bottom at like 78 and get in that one for another retest of this guy, 95. So keep XLE on watch long uh, oil stocks long uh, rig RIG looks just like a it looks just like the uh, um, AI stock before it took off so RIG long I like that one and these might take a couple weeks so you're gonna have to get July or later expirations. Um, USO, Jake brought up a really good one. X, I really like this one because if you look left, um, you, know, you have this major area of support. So let's do this. Uh, take our little rectangles and say, okay, they pushed it from here, you know, 20, 30 to, to $30. All right, they bought it up. Um, 20 to 30, didn't quite get there, but still bought it. And then they got underneath it and they kicked in all the institutional buyers and they went 20 to, 20 to, uh, whatever that was, 40, 20 to 40. So 100% return, all right? Got back underneath that one, ripped it back up, got down here again, ripped it back up took a long time, but they still got to 30. And now this is support again. So the expectation would be, you know, 26 would be a safe bet. 30 is gonna be our ultimate goal. So keep X on watch, which falls under materials. Steel, Steel Corporation, X. Um, and that's all I got. I think that's all I got. Uh, the last thing was Bitcoin. Um, so again, we were just talking about it. it's just bull flagging, and check this out since we posted this. So we kind of put a little line here and said, you know, it's going to break below this twenty-five thousand area would be a good place to buy it, and it's going to squeeze back up. And so far, it's been doing pretty well. So watch this one because now we have this breakout area. This could be a major bounce in Bitcoin. This breakout area is now support. 
so they could break out, retest it, and go. So keep Bitcoin on watch. And with Bitcoin, you're going to want to play Coin. Coin was an excellent move last week. And um, Coin, uh, we had a line at 51.61. And uh, I don't know who took this one. I did not. But if you bought at 51.61 and bought 55 calls, you know, they printed on Friday. Um, that one looks excellent. Riot, I'm in shares long term and also in uh, 10 or 11 calls for July. But again, same story as Oxy. You know, it's just holding this area of support. Um, looks like you got a, a wedge kind of thing here. So break above that, we could see a squeeze up to 12 bucks easily. Um, and then ultimately, you have the same story here. You have prior resistance is becoming support and that's a pretty good reversal candle there i know it's hard to see on with all my stuff here but but um you know i i like this this bottom in here and you just keep your stop at 9.95 i think we talked about this one yeah i mean i mean they've had pretty wicked rips rips from $10, right? So 10, 10, up to 25, yeah, 10 to 25, that was kind of our goal, right? This is a weekly chart of Riot. Um, it's just a bull flag, ready to go 25, right? MSTR is always fun because it can move like $30 in a day. That's a pretty wicked move up there, right? Uh, and we're just flagging again. So keep that one on watch to 500 area. So that could be exceptional from, you know, 300 to 500 within a couple weeks. So keep that one on watch. Uh, very cheap out of the money options. Um, in the money, it's hard to trade this one because it moves $10 in a day. So, you know, I would assume they're going to have a split someday soon here. I would, I would hope they would. But, uh, you know, 400 calls for three weeks from now and they move to 500 that's going to be a heck of a return. So keep uh, Bitcoin long on watch. Um, Tesla's still kind of fun. NVIDIA, if you want to try to play that one long, try, try to ride it to the top, you can. But um, overall, uh, we still have some higher to go. And um, last thing I'm going to talk about is something interesting about the market is... HYG is uh, high yield corporate bonds, and they have not been breaking out like SPY. So if you compare this chart, this was COVID crash, 2020 full recovery, 2021, we're back down here at COVID crash levels, and we're a little bit above it. But nobody is, nobody is quick to invest in companies. They'll buy their stock, but they don't want to invest long term. Right now we just kind of have this bearish wedge thing going on and we could break down and see a pretty bad recession. So keep that in mind. Um, Long-term bonds isn't looking great. So um, that's all I got. Send me a message if you got any questions. Thank you guys.